as you saw in the last video, spectral rotation can be reversed. You can unrotate something either by rotating it four times, or instead you can rotate it once, reverse it, and then rotate that one, and then reverse the output signal from that. And between the last rotation back, I'm going to add an effect and then unrotate it and then see what happens. I've already done a few of these. So for today, I'm going to use this sample. And the rotated version sounds like that. And then when you reverse that and stick it back through the, the rotator, you get, oh Jesus, you get back the original sample. But that's also reversed, so you need to reverse that one again. The first effect I tried out was just a simple wave shaper. I did this first on this sample. which is incredibly annoying. But what this does is it kind of distorts this. And yeah, that, that intermodulates the f f frequencies. The, the, well, the tones here are actually what used to be the transients. So it, it messes around with them. And what that creates is this effect. Regain it. Comparing that to the original. It sounds like it got a lot more noisy. So that now, it sounds like a very degraded sample. And then I went in further, I went in further, made it more distorted, and then it ended up creating this. Okay, gain please, thank you. So basically all that remains is just the transients. That is a horrible sound. <laughs> As you can see, not much is left from what used to be the piano tones, if you remember. It is rotated, so whatever is vertical is actually a tone. You can't really see them anymore. They're obfuscated, or well not obfuscated, they're surrounded by a bunch of noise which is interfering with it, and all that remains is the, uh, the tones, which are, used to be the transients. Rotated again will become the transients, which are quite loud now. And they seem to be the only thing that remains. The next thing I tried was this frequency shifter automation here, uh, while this was playing, so... I had the automation here and I was automating a frequency shifter as this was going and then afterwards it produced this. And so what this has done is it's kind of moved stuff around in time. So it's shifting frequencies up and down, which in, in when it's rotated, frequency and time switch places. So we're actually shifting time along frequency, which is what you see here. And that's, yeah, you can do the same thing with convolution. The next thing I tried was with pitch. But pitch, as you can see, does the same thing, except that it changes the strength along time. I'll just let you listen to it first. Yeah, as you can see, the strength of the smear gets less over time. I can demonstrate why in this little thing here. So assume that your signal is a line, a frequency. Let's say you play an octave. Uh, this frequency is twice this frequency, which means that these two are in a two to one ratio. 
right? What pitch will do, if, if you pitch up something, it stretches it along the frequency axis, which conserves this ratio. Frequency shifting, on the other hand, doesn't conserve that ratio because it moves stuff up linear. So now that looks like a four to five or a three to four ratio, which is majorly different. It's a four to three, rather. So if you were to have a sort of wavy signal, what a frequency shifter is doing is it's doing this. As you move something up in a frequency shifter, it'll keep the same sort of, it, it'll keep the same look, right? It'll keep the same tallness. It'll appear the same height as you go up on a linear on a linear frequency axis. Because it's a frequency shifter, it shifts frequency, it doesn't stretch it. On the other hand, let's say if you have pitch instead, if you have pitch instead, what it'll do is it'll actually stretch the audio, which results in the higher versions of it being stretched out more than the lower versions, which is what you see. And when you rotate it back, and reverse it, obviously. You can see what that's doing. The amount of smear decreases as you play the file. F the file, the, the sound. Um, no, put it back in this one, actually, because that makes sense what we're seeing. What we see here is that, and that explains that. Next up, we have delay. So, well, putting delay on this, I had to leave it at this impulse first. And then I applied delay and then reversed it such that, you know, it wouldn't be delayed after the end of the sample. So that's what we're going to be hearing. And that creates this effect. You can already see it uh, as the frequencies are just duplicated across the frequency axis, which used to be the time axis. And that sounds like this. This is, a, this is going to sound super annoying. And the reason it sounds bad is, well, like, goddamn. Now, it sounds very similar to a bit crusher. And I will demonstrate a bit crusher right now. So if I play the original piano sample. You see? You see in the spectrum what it looks like. You've got the low, it kind of tapers off up the spectrum. If we increase the amount of reduction, what you see is that it actually is kind of repeats up the frequency axis. But not in the same way that delay is done. In fact, you've got this, the original signal, and then it's folding back in on itself because it's emulating some kind of Nyquisting, old old Nyquisting frequency stuff, whatever. And it, it wraps back down on itself, and it also repeats itself at the same time. I don't know how to, because it like wraps and then repeats, wraps and repeats. So it's kind of like a delay and a reverse delay at the same time if you were to rotate it. But uh, what we've done is only use delay instead, which isn't quite the same. As you can see, it doesn't repeat and then reverse back on itself. It, it just repeats con uh, continuously like that, which is a bit different, but it sounds pretty, pretty similar. Oh, good Lord. Uh, the last thing I did was I kept the sample reversed, applied reverb, reversed it, rotated it and reversed it again. So this is what reverb, applying reverb sounds like. Oh my God, I keep forgetting gain. That is <clears throat> what reverb sounds like. Starting from the reversed signal here, the beginning of the reversed, uh, the beginning of the rotated sample contains most of the low end information, and then it can, contains the the mids, and then it contains all the high stuff. So if you apply reverb, it basically smears across all the frequencies. So I'll demonstrate what reverb does spectrally. If you have a little impulse like this, what reverb will do is this. It'll smear it across, and if you rotate it first, and then you smear it across time, you can see that the frequency, and then you put it back in, into the whatever we see here, you can see that the lower frequency has been smeared 
upwards, which is what we are seeing in here. All the lower frequencies have been smeared up the spectrum and is obscuring what note it is. Sounds like an air conditioner or something. So it's sort of like <clears throat> blurring the pitch. It's like applying a vertical blur to your spectrum is what uh, applying reverb before unrotating. For the final demonstration, I would just like to point out that when you rotate, you swap frequency and time. So what this means is if you have an EQ, you know, and you stick that back in, if you unrotate that, what that essentially does is make an, a volume envelope. You can turn an EQ into a volume envelope by applying an EQ before you unrotate something, which is what I have done here on one of the tracks on this one. Before unrotating, I applied this, which is a low cut, a couple of peaks and two notches. Remembering that the signal is reversed, you can see that I cut most of the low end, which results in a fade-in. There's a peak around this point, which is this peak. There's a notch here, which corresponds to this complete disappearance of the signal. And then there's this uh, peak here, which is corresponds to this. And this notch here corresponds to this absence of sound there. And one peak, and then so on. And yeah, essentially... Essentially, you can turn an EQ into a volume envelope with this. <clears throat> and if you hear the ringing that you can see right here, this sort of ringing here, uh, that's just from the convolver used here. It's just, it's just not that clean because the ending is like, you know, it suddenly cuts off at Nyquist and just makes a big click, you know, the click of death. And the <laughs> ultra shifter pre preset that I'm using that I've made uh, it uses multiple frequency shifters, which kind of ring out occasionally, and it's not exact—it's not exactly a hundred percent clean process. There's got to be some way to do it. I've been reading the comments, but yeah, that was a couple of oh, the, the, the lag. But that is a couple of uh, effects before unrotating. I was just showcasing this here, and they're very interesting. Except I don't like the delay one at all. That's very annoying. But this one I quite like. It sounds like uh, Spectral Sand, the plugin by. Uh, it sounds very similar to this plugin <laughs> because it does this thing. It pretty much does this. But in real time, and it's got more control and stuff. It's pretty awesome. You should get it. Uh, yeah, this is cool, um, I guess. Well, there you have it. That's um, Spectral Rotation applications that I found. In the first video I, I did, I said, I, I just kind of threw, a, had, had a throw, throwaway comment where I mentioned, oh, this is uh, impractical, it's just for looks, but I mean, since then, it's been like five days, I found a couple uses, so that's pretty nice. On an unrelated note, I would like to try something right now. I'm going to try to make an audio watermark out of my voice. Hello, I am speaking into my microphone. Why is the project so fucking loud? Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. So right now I just recorded this. Hello, I am speaking into my microphone, and I'm going to stick that onto track six, which is what I use for this, and I'm going to see what that does. Uh, probably not the most optimal way of doing this, but you know. That sounds fucking awesome. Okay, so I've created this uh, sample, which <laughs> is my voice f rotated by 90 degrees. What you can do, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I should just, you know, make a quick beat to show it off. I guess I should, hey? Oh, good grief, I have to make a fucking beat. Oh, this isn't going too well. Uh, where's my fucking gated reverb? Oh, that's the wrong one. Where's the snare? It's called the snare reverb. That's the one. Why is there no width? Oh, there is. My headphones are tweaking. Oh, good lord. Okay, so I've just made this quick beat right now. Oh, 
Oh, good. So this is hidden in here. It's it's a bit messed up, honestly. But all the information is mostly there. I'm just playing a little bit of reverb. And what I'm going to try and do is see how much of this can actually be recovered from just flipping it back. So what I'm just going to do right now is stick it over here. So I'm going to reverse this and then I'm going to stick the vocal wherever it appears, which is right here. I'm going to stick the part where it appears right on there. I'm going to put it on the reversing chain. And then I'm just going to see what happens if I just reverse it from here. I need to remember to mute everything else though. So. <laughs> As you can hear, you can kind of hear the voice. I mean, it's probably not that good. Oh, good lord. Shut up, shut up. And then if I reverse this. Hello, I am speaking into my microphone. You can kind of hear it. It's obfuscated by a bit of others. Let me, I, should, I should try this again, but like properly gain it so it's a bit louder. I do. I don't think I did that any better. Uh. But let's try it anyway. Right, so you can clearly hear the voice in there. First off, you might want to, you know, EQ out everything that isn't part of what you want. So this is like kind of trimming the sound. Maybe I should have given it more room in the mix or whatever. But you can practically just hear what is being said. Okay, in reverse, remember. Okay, I, I may have cut it off a bit early, but you can see here that, yeah. Hello, I am speaking into my microphone. <laughs> right there. Which is really cool. So you can watermark your stuff with this, even though it's like a really, <laughs> it's a really hard thing to pull off. But, you know, you could just... Hello, I am speaking into my microphone. You can barely make out what I'm saying, but it is a way to record, uh, uh, to watermark your stuff. I am spe- Hello, I am speaking into my microphone. Hello, I am speaking into my microphone. <laughs> That's- <laughs> It's a bit different, it's a bit- it's a- it's very degraded, but it's possible to, you know, do that and maybe kind of make out the words. That is another additional thing, and, you know, I, I like this beat. I think I did a pretty good job here. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. This is nice. Uh, awesome. Well, there you have it. That's, uh, that's that. That was unscripted. Th this whole bit was unscripted. I don't know why I did that. Um, anyway, thank you. Uh, that's, yeah, cool.